Hey, 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 hey. Jim McClung, Archer Monologues. A little bit more. Hmm. Stuff. I'm slinging it today, baby. Alright, we got all kind of shit to talk about. Well, I do. <laughs> we? No, we're not talking. I'm talking, you're not talking. Well, you can talk wherever you are, because free speech and all that, but... <clears throat> Not in my room. Um, well, you can actually make a comment in the comment section if you like. Ah, that's fine. Go for it. Okay. Where should I begin? Oh, by the way, we're in the jet. We're in the freedom jet. <clears throat> High above the heads of most people. Flying cool, man. Flying cool. So, what we have here is... Uh, um, what we have here is, uh, yeah, yeah, I, we got a lot of crazy people. Uh, you know, what kind of words can I use to describe people in general? Um, I could be specific. Uh, there are people that are uh, delusional. Uh, there are people who are uh, hysterical, paranoid. There are people who suffer from... You know, mental illness, brain damage, and there are people who are simply, you know, fucking retarded. <laughs> okay, it's not politically correct. All right, uh, for one thing, uh, politically correct is not really politically correct. <clears throat> there is the irony in that one. Um because in some cases when somebody wants to do a politically correct bullshit kind of nonsense to another person on another person let's say they have just created a conflict they have just you know engaged in faux pas behavior in other words politically correct people are very often not politically correct by certain standards I might add um, but anyway we have this thing about <laughs> and I just really it kind of boggles the mind sometimes just going through the headlines in the morning as I often do well pretty much every morning kind of cruise through the headlines, see what the fuck is going on in this world, this crazy world, and uh, I come across interesting things, and I don't have time in my day to comment, critique, analyze, conclude everything, or about everything. Um, I have my own problems. Is what I'm saying. All right, I'm gonna do a little test. It's kind of stepping aside, you know, segueing into an aside thingy. There's nothing to do with what I just say. Just like, beep, like commercial break or whatever. All right, let's try this. Let's try this. Let's try this. Trying this, and it's uh, at 3.52 seconds into the show. Trying this. Trying this. Yes, I am. All right, test over. <clears throat> uh, that's for my benefit, not yours, so you need not worry. You not concern yourself with it. It's a technical test I was uh, conducting on the sound system. All right, so let's forget that and get back to where we were. I know where I was, you weren't here. You're not here. So you're not we were, okay? It's not we, it's I. Like in the letter I, meaning I, me, myself, and I. All right, so, <laughs> so how about some trivial bullshit, nonsense, crap? All right, New York Times journalist turns to supermodel and makes sick remark about Melina Trump, and she doesn't let it slide. 
All right, names are not important. I don't want to give these people airtight. But, um, besides, I can't pronounce the name. <laughs> Let's just call her Emily, okay? I will give her, I gave you that name, Emily. Uh, supermodel, whatever the fuck that means. Uh, okay. So, a New York Times journalist launches sexist attack on First Lady, Melina. And so she said, uh, I found myself sitting next to this person, you know, and then she said it, and I just, I thought that was just, and she didn't like what she heard, okay? And, um, hey, I don't like a lot of things I hear, like, you know, criminals getting away with things, and, and, and I mean real criminals, I don't mean like this fake fabricated criminals that the government is always, you know, torturing and harassing and shit. I'm talking about real criminals like mass murderers, you know, George Bush, and uh, liars like Al Gore, and, um, traitors like, oh, I don't know, um, Obama, <laughs> uh, and um, Nazi bastard pieces of shit like, um, uh, okay, maybe Nazi is not the right word, you know what I'm saying? But what I was going for here was, you know, the psychopath, criminally insane, mass murdering, piece of shit, Hillary Clinton. Now, you see, I, I said that in conjunction with the thing where I was talking about the, the reporter, journalist, uh, and the supermodel. Um, so I just said that, and I, let's say someone, like a supermodel, like supermodel Emily was sitting next to me, you know, somewhere, like uh, I don't know, on an airplane or in, in, in a in a in the audience of some production or whatever, and heard me say what I just said about Hillary and so on. Would she lambast me for what I said? Would she say I wasn't being? politically correct, or would she say that I was actually being politically correct? I, you know, who knows? But, would she blast me for it? Uh, for what I said about Hillary and so on. Uh, well, since what I said is true, <laughs> you know, really, what I said is true. I mean, there's not too much. I don't even think anybody with their right mind would even debate such a thing. I mean, Hillary did commit Directly, indirectly, you know, mass murder. And maybe, and I'm just saying maybe, this is like an observation or an opinion. It's not, it's not classified in the category of absolutely proven fact, okay? Because I don't have any proof. I'm just going to express an opinion. Which could very well get me in trouble with the politically correct nitwits. Okay? So I think, you know, Hillary Clinton is guilty of a lot of crimes that she hasn't been indicted for <clears throat> and probably never will be because come on let's just be real here you know George Bush is walking around he's never been indicted not well not in America I mean, he has in in uh, other countries and uh, to the point that he can't even go to those countries because he'll get arrested and taken to the Hague and executed for crimes against humanity. Come on. So, old Georgie kind of can't go to various other countries. In Europe, for example. Uh, I think that, uh, and, and that's not even my opinion. I'm, you know, the piece of shit, garbage, slug, pond scum, motherfucker. Um... Is a criminal, psychopathic, murdering bastard. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this what the, what the journalist is complaining about here, or whatever, uh, or, or what the what the supermodel is saying is, uh, you know, minor, minor, insignificant stuff compared to what I just said. <clears throat> And God knows what I'm going to be 
that's a figure of speech. I, there is no God. I'm not going to get into that. But anyway, uh, what she said, what the journalist said, and the supermodel heard, is is like you know, pfft, compared to what I said just now about Donald Trump. No, I didn't say anything about Donald Trump, did I? Um, <laughs> I've got four years probably to say whatever about Donald Trump. And I have said a few things already. You know, like Donald Trump is probably, I think, in my opinion, in my opinion, uh, and I don't very often give my opinion, by the way, but, you know, sometimes. And in my opinion, Donald Trump is a lunatic. But, you know, as I've said before, just being something doesn't necessarily constitute doing something. So until Donald Trump does something lunatical, lunatical, lunaticky, <laughs> uh, you know, lunatic-like, uh, then I'm not going to make a big deal about this. You know what I'm saying? I mean, in my opinion, he's a lunatic, and it is my, you know, opinion that if he is truly a lunatic, and uh, that's fine, because just being something is not doing something. I, don't like, I mean, you could be fucking insane, and you know, like a, a, a criminally insane murdering bastard, or mass murdering psychopath, or something. You know, and, and you know, it, well, when I say mass murdering, I mean capable of it, not necessarily doing it. <clears throat> Uh, same goes for a lot of other things. I mean, being homosexual doesn't automatically mean that you're uh, you know, a rapist of little boys. Let's say if you're gay, you know, uh, doesn't necessarily mean you're a, 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 a un, well an unsavory person, or doesn't mean you've done any criminal act at all. And when I say criminal act, I mean. I'm not talking in regards to the fabricated and, and uh, fabricated and what's that word? Fabricate. Let's just go with fabricated and okay, fabricated. There's another word. Fabricated laws that have been created in America today, up to today. And like about 95% of them or more, I'm guessing here, I don't know. Uh, a lot of laws are just stupid. Certainly anti-freedom, anti-nature, anti-American, anti-humanity, and so forth. I mean, a lot of them. Lots of them. Like Title 18 of the U.S. Code. I mean, that, that law, that law is just fucking insane. I mean, seriously. Uh, and other, and also just disgusting and pathetic. And and whoever wrote it, introduced it to the Congress, got it passed, got it in you know inserted into the U.S. code books. You know they all and those who enforce it. By the way, I'm talking about Title 18 now of the U.S. Code that enforce it, or whatever you want to call that that they do with it. Uh, you know, like arrest people based on that law should be arrested, tried, convicted of crimes against humanity. And I'm serious about that. They committed a crime against humanity. And, of course, the senators who voted for it and made it a law committed treason. Seeing as how the Constitution says, oh, for crying out loud, what's with the phone? All right. Where's my freaking... Hold on. All right, sorry for the interruption. Uh, another call from uh, my publishers. Well, not my publishers, but publishers who want me to work with them and uh, publish my books through them. Uh, sadly, for them, uh, probably not <laughs> going to do that. All right, but at least they were considerate enough to give me a call. Uh, I won't get into that. So let's get back to what we were talking about here. Uh, okay, so, so the journalist said something, and I'll tell you exactly what she said. I will quote. And this is sort of hearsay, because I, I, I wasn't there, so I didn't hear her say it. 
And I'm assuming the journalist that uh, said this was a female and overheard by a female. <clears throat> okay. Quote, Melina, Melana, Melina, Melena. She didn't say it three times. Okay, I'll start over again. Quote, Melena is a hooker. End quote. All right. Now, um, somebody expressed an opinion. And believe me, <laughs> there are a lot of people out there, a lot, I'm thinking millions of people who say, express their opinions and express opinions that are not <laughs> by a long shot politically correct uh, and I don't really give a fuck about that because anybody would even go politically correct that's just like oh that, why don't you just like shoot yourself in the brain duh because uh, just 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 so you know uh, we here at art for monologues do not, we do not do politically correct. And if you've been listening to my shows or read anything I posted on the internet, Facebook, whatever, uh, you know that I just don't do politically correct. Why is that? Because it's stupid. Okay, so he, she's, this person says Melina is a hooker. That's an opinion. Just like me, if I was to suggest that maybe uh, that Donald Trump is uh, a lunatic, um, well, in the first place, let's just go through this real quick. Okay, number one, it's somebody's opinion, and who gives a shit? Um, this was a person talking out loud, you know, using language, English, to say something, to express an opinion. I don't think anyone in their right mind would take that as a fact or consider what she said as a fact. Because there's so many reasons to condemn it if it were made as a statement of fact that that could just simply say, no, probably not true. Now, is it slander or libel? Well, it was spoken out loud, I, I assume, from what I'm reading here. That it was spoken out loud, so it's therefore slander. Okay. All right, in the first place, in the first place, uh, I don't have a problem with anyone being a hooker. All right? And you can use other words if you want. Hooker, prostitute. Call girl. Um, what they, what's that other word? Uh, sh not chaperone. Uh, companion. Um, um, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I don't have a problem with being a hooker. Anybody. I mean, if you're a hooker, so that's if that's if you want to call that an occupation or a job or whatever. Um, I don't see anything wrong with that. Now, see, there's where the problem is. I don't see anything wrong with that because there isn't anything wrong with that. But still, you know, you might ah, oh, it's just terrible. And uh, then you might go off onto some tirade about somebody who might you may know as a hooker. You might say, oh, that person's a whore and a slut and you know all kind of nasty names. Still, just your opinion. And of course, opinions are allowed. Now, I, I kind of object the idea, or the notion, stupid notion, really, uh, that uh, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Um, I'm not suggesting you don't have the right to your opinion. I'm suggesting that the idea that, <laughs> that everybody's entitled to their opinion is uh, a little flawed. And I won't get into the details on that, because that, that would take a whole show. But the word hooker, I mean, what is that? A prostitute, right? Uh, not necessarily a high price one, because you know you could be like a twenty dollar whore down on the street corner, and I do not say that word whore in a bad defamatory way. 
Um, I've known some people who were prostitutes, and they have themselves at some point or another mentioned the word whore and said, "Ah, eh, I'm a whore," and uh, they were really proud of that because they, that was they earned a living doing that, or at least got some extra money on the side. My point here is this: an opinion is an opinion; it means nothing. Now you can hear someone express an opinion and then say, "You know, I'm kind of." I'm kind of, you know, that just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I don't like it. I didn't like what that person said. They, they said something really nasty about somebody, and I, just, I don't like it. And then, okay, well, you know, in your opinion, could be that the person who called Malena a, a hooker is a detestable, disgusting person, or, or just rude, or whatever. In other words, this has nothing to do with Malena, what I'm talking about. The way I'm, you know, because she is what she is, past, present, and future, and, and I don't care. Doesn't have anything to do with me. I'm not involved in her business. Private life, sex life, whatever. I'm not, you know, her marriage, any of that stuff. It's not my problem, not my business, and not my concern. And I could care less what she does, or is, or was, or did. I mean, apparently she posed for nude photographs. Um, I'm guessing being a model, that would probably be a part of her job. And uh, she's a beautiful woman, and so, hey, why not? There are people who are going to mention, you know, like, oh, oh, you know, she's a bad person because she posed naked in front of a camera. Uh, and no pictures were published, printed, and shown to the public, uh, to the world, or whatever. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's not a bad thing. I don't see a problem there. Because, you know, people are people, and they have bodies, and they have body parts. And in her case, she has pretty nice-looking body parts. Even today, <clears throat> probably a lot more beautiful body parts when she was younger. The point is, expressing the opinion shouldn't get your head cut off. And, you know, it's not a grounds to, you know, put you in prison or something. Uh, people can have an opinion about you because you have an opinion about somebody else or about them. I mean, I mean, if I was Malena and if someone called me a hooker, I'd probably react negatively. Uh, I'm not saying violently, but, you know, a good slap in the face would probably be forthcoming. Um, almost as a form of self-defense. Um, and I, <laughs> you know, my question here, my thought would be, like, at this point, would Milena file a lawsuit of slander against this person for calling her a hooker? There seems to be some, some tendency to do that. Um, she has sued people. And, uh, and that's very nice that she can afford to do so. I am not a musician to sue people who call me names. On the internet, for example, um, you know, I've called everything, you know, everything from A to Z, probably Z. I can't think of a word that starts with Z that would be a slur or a bad name. Uh, zoophile, because um, I love zoos. Um, uh, um, not particularly fond of zoos. But anyway, I've been to a zoo, you know, big deal. Uh, but calling me very names like like ah you're a you're an idiot you know like okay well that's your opinion and uh bye bye don't need to talk to you anymore see ya no i'm not seeing you you're gone you're history uh because i'm not an idiot and there are worse names I, i've been called creepy pervert uh some really nasty things that are just absolutely totally absurd and ridiculous to for anyone to even think that let alone say it out loud or write it on a freaking Facebook page. You know, things like, oh, you're a child molester. You're like, I've never molested a child in my life, and I never will, because it's just wrong. And, uh, excuse me, why would you say that about me? That's just absurd. And it's certainly since I, there is no evidence that I've ever done such a thing, and certainly I've never said or indicated that I would, or that I have ever done such a disgusting thing, uh, then again, I'd have to examine the word child molester and figure out exactly what that means. Because 
uh, what does that mean? Because obviously words are have been turned into babble. English language is turned into babble by the mind benders and the conspiracy to, uh, well, you know, the theory on all that, which is not a theory. It's true. Not my opinion. Uh, so anyway, so calling her a hooker, I mean, I, 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 that would probably hurt, I guess, if I wasn't a hooker. But if I was a hooker, then I'd probably say, mm, so what? You know, like like that. I would probably say that. Would, you know, like someone said, oh, you're a narcissist. And I'm like, um, so what? So what if I am? <clears throat> and I've heard people call Donald Trump as a narcissist. Um, so? Um, if I was paying him. <laughs> if I was paying him. Uh, if I was paying him. That's kind of a joke. If I was paying him, um, would it matter? I mean, I'm, if he's a president and he's, uh, you know, being being the president, doing presidential things, and he's like, uh, being a narcissist doesn't have anything to do with that, right? Unless, of course, he's a narcissist who is going to act on his narcissism and do something narcissistic in the sense of doing something dastardly or bad. Um, oh, by the way, this, this Donald Trump thing is like surreal, man. I mean surreal. It's like some kind of weird. It's like do, 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 Twilight Zone kind of like weird. All right. So anyway, if you're, if you're, uh, if, I mean, okay, number one, like I said, okay, forget number one. Like I said, calling someone a hooker is just like, who cares? I mean, big freaking deal. Like, let's make a major issue out of this. Okay? Let's suppose at some point, Elena was a hooker. And, you know, maybe call, like a call girl or a comfort woman or whatever phrase, word you want to use. Uh, so what? Uh, what's that got to do with anything that has to do with you and me and us and America or whatever? I mean, you're like, Get serious, people. I mean, picky, 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 picky. And then like, oh, it's bad. You know, I, I don't care. And besides, I think hookers are pretty cool. Some of them. I have taken uh, the uh, opportunities afforded me by hookers in the past. I have, you know, used their service that they offered to me of their own free will. Okay, I'm going to be blunt. I have fucked a prostitute. And I have given money to said prostitute as gratitude for having allowed me to fuck her. And it goes both ways because, well, I was fucking her, she was fucking me. Because it takes two to fuck like that. You know, it's like two. Fucking fuck her, fuck he, fuck he, fuck her. It's either, it's ballot either way. And I paid money for that. Not a lot. I mean, I, if, if Milena was ever a hooker, if she was, and I'm not saying she is, or was, but if she was, I'm pretty sure that uh, she wouldn't have been uh, letting me fuck her for 20 bucks. I just seriously doubt that a high-priced, high-class, high-end call girl hooker person would you know actually say ah sure uh, I'll fuck you for 20 bucks not gonna happen hell I don't even think the the lowest rung of prostitutes in the days of America would fuck somebody for 20 bucks I just that probably be insulting like you know my pussy's worth a lot more than 20 bucks that was a quote um, <clears throat> but back in the day I was paying 20 bucks and it was just as good as the 50 buck one, 40 buck one. You know, there was there were some $40 hookers and uh, some $50 hookers. And uh, to be honest with you, the $50 hooker just didn't look to me like she was worth it. I mean, like, I'm sorry, but you just don't look the part of a $50 hooker. Sorry. $40, eh, I've had the opportunity, not recently, but in the distant 
past, not too distant, I don't know, but let's just say over 12 years ago, just to put that previous to the relationship I have now with a wonderful woman, um, <clears throat> who is not a hooker, <laughs> and as far as I know, has never been called one. So the thing is, uh, and I, uh, and uh, yeah, and the woman, oh, and uh, 50 bucks, and he's, uh, <laughs> not going to happen, sweetie. No, because I have a certain rate here that they're like, I'm thinking uh, a, a, a fuck, uh, an, a, a case of having sex with someone that lasts for like just a few minutes is really not worth that kind of money. Sorry, just, you're not. I don't care if you're Melania Trump or whoever. I mean, to my rate of basing value on things like a piece of ass or some pussy or fucking for a, a few minutes or maybe even an hour uh, or two, depending on, you know, my stamina for that particular day. Oh, yeah. Oh, I should just say it. I don't do quickies, okay? I just don't. This two, three-minute man thing is just... Forget it. Not gonna happen. I just don't do those. <laughs> just never have, never will. Just don't. I just don't. Uh, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying that you know, for me to reach an orgasm in three minutes is just let's just say b bizarre. Un it's, no, it's not gonna happen. So anyway, it might be <laughs> the. It, it, the hooker might have said, you know, you know, since I know you have a reputation for fucking for a lot longer than five minutes, uh, I think maybe if I'm going to fuck you and have sex with you, whatever, you're going to have to pay me a little extra because I'm not going to fuck you for an hour or two or two for a lousy 20, 30, 40, 50 bucks. It's, that's just not enough for my time and my effort. Maybe a hundred. I'll think about it. But anyway, that it wasn't that much of a problem back in the day when I was actually making use of the services of a prostitute. Nobody complained about that. And I think that's probably just good business, considering, you know, it wasn't a bad fuck. It wasn't like I was nasty. But you have to have a little patience. So I'm just saying, just saying. I just don't do quickie. I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's just probably for a prostitute that's a bad thing because I oh I don't have time to stay here forever. I mean get it over with so I can get on about my business. And I understand that it's good, just not good business to tie up all your time with one guy for two hours when you got you know ten guys standing on the street corner waiting for you. Not that this happened in real life, but I'm I'm proposing that perhaps there were others waiting in line after me. So do it, get it over with, so I can get back with my next customer. Uh, cool. That's cool. I'm not a problem. That's business, and I understand it. The point is, I guess, there are a lot of points, but one point is, uh, okay, so someone had an opinion about Milena, and she's probably wrong. I don't know. Could be. <sighs> but the statement was, Milena is a hooker. Now, um, I doubt it. I really do. And the statement, as it is worded, is stated almost as a fact. See, how do you tell the difference between somebody stating a fact and someone stating an opinion? And because an opinion is not necessarily a fact, and vice versa. Now, if she had said, I, I mean, that's not, not a complete sentence, really. It's more like, I think or I imagine, or uh, it is my opinion that Melena is a hooker. Okay? Then we get a better picture of what the woman was saying. The journalist, I mean. <clears throat> In my opinion. Then that qualifies the statement. It's not like, oh, uh, but then again, you could also say, if a person was to say, hypothetically now, uh, I know for a fact that Melena is a hooker. That's different. That's more like stating a fact and in that case uh, it's probably it's just could be very seriously required that you have some evidence to this factual statement that you claim to make 
in which case you could be taken to court and sued for slander and saying things about someone just simply not true and you didn't prove it and therefore you're going to have to pay Melina, uh, Melina, uh, you know, like $150 million for slandering her. The problem here is this. People who take people that say things like this seriously are not bright, okay? So if I was to listen to someone and say, oh, Melina is a hooker, then I would say, uh, that's your opinion and uh, I don't care. And secondly, uh, why are you talking to me and telling me this? Because basically, <laughs> you don't know that. You're just saying stuff that's just not true. Prove it. You know, prove it. Or just shut the fuck up. Anyway, calling Milena a uh, hooker is uh, not really a major crisis. It's, it's It might be news today for about 10 minutes or however long it takes me to do the show about this subject. Um, that's about it. And then, you know, I'm done. It's over. Moving on. Not going to give that too much attention. I'm giving it some attention now because the news people gave it attention. All right. So let me address this in the closing minutes of my show, the episode today. Uh, let's say Melina posed nude for photographers and uh, her picture was taken and it is not her. The picture, I mean, because pictures are not people. People are not flat. Uh, that's just common sense. So, uh, even though people don't understand the concept. Ah, oh, photograph! It's a person. Put people in jail for having a picture of someone naked or whatever. Under 18, for example. Uh, which is total insanity and stupidity to the max. Because that's not true. And that's not even their opinion, and what I just said is not my opinion. It is a professional conclusion based on the facts that, you know, it's just stupid. <clears throat> so, so she posed nude. She has the body. She, and it's just a body. I mean, every human being has a body. Good, bad, or not. Ugly or otherwise. Beautiful, gorgeous, sexy, extremely awesome body. And then there are other people that are like totally ugly and disgusting and whatever. And it's just a body. Body parts made up into a human body that, you know, that a conscious person occupies. So, anyway. The point is, the point is, opinions, big deal. Slander and libel and defamation, eh, there are ways to deal with that. It's called sue them in court for libel, slander, and defamation, and probably win if what they said is not true, and if it harmed you and injured you in some way. I really don't think that this woman's opinion of Milena is going to harm Milena or anyone else. It's just something said, best left to fade away in, in the airwaves of uh, sound. Uh, just forget it. Don't, just forget it. Don't worry about it. But the idea is that Malena is somehow a bad person, or weak, wicked, or even you know, some, perhaps I don't know, criminal or whatever, because at some point she posed nude, or at some point she uh, uh, may have been an escort to someone. Uh, I don't mean paid escort, I mean was companion to someone at some time. Like, I like went out to dinner with Donald at some point, and like, hi, and I, hi, and uh, you want some dinner? And sure, and then they have dinner, and then eat, and go home, and do whatever they do. Not my business. What to do. And if Donald Trump gave her a couple thousand bucks for the privilege or honor of being with him, if that could be said to be the case, then you know, hey, I mean, it is, it is mine, maybe. He thought, oh, it's an honor to have sex with me, and, you know, but I'll give you a couple thousand dollars just for the hell of it because I'm rich and I can afford it. And, you know, you deserve it and I want you to have it as a gift uh, to show my gratitude. You know. Prostitution, by the way, is not a real crime. <laughs> it's some kind of fabricated bullshit nonsense left over from the Dark Ages. Um, which, as from what I've understood, is probably... Prostitution in the old days was probably even more honorable than it is today. And it is honorable, and it's a 
you know, hey, in a free society, if you want to fuck someone for money, it's your business, your body, your life, and your decision. Only your decision. Nobody else's. And if people think that you're kind of slovenly for doing it, then, you know, that's their opinion, and that's really not going to affect me. I mean, if I was a woman and I was had a beautiful body, and I said, you know what? I could probably get some money from some guy if I just let him fuck me. And then, okay, whatever. And that would be what I did. It is my right to do so. Let me put it in, in an official way. In an official way. Um, it is my natural, inalienable human right to have sex with another person for money. It's not as if a lot, most women don't do that. Directly or indirectly. Like, I will, if you fuck me, I will marry you and be your husband and support you for the rest of your life. I think there's a thin line there between that being a woman, that woman being a prostitute and not being a prostitute. But, you know, hey, hey, hey. But, you know. I think that's changing. I think there are a lot of women that are out there saying, like, I'll be damned. <laughs> yeah, I'll marry you and live with you because I like you. We'll have babies together because, you know, I like babies and we're we have a relationship and we're going to, you know, take care of this child together one way or another. So I'm just saying this, just to wrap it up, calling Melina a hooker is just, it's kind of silly because one, who gives a shit? And two, it's just your opinion. And three, it may very well not be true. Therefore, you can't really make a statement of fact about it unless you have some evidence, which I don't know of any evidence. I haven't heard any evidence, so it doesn't matter. And second, and finally, who cares? And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if I was a girl and beautiful and I needed some money and I, ah, that guy gave me a hundred bucks, ah, just let him put me. Uh, then in that case, maybe I would do that if I needed a hundred bucks, which I don't. But maybe at some point in my life I did. I certainly needed the services of a prostitute at some point in my life, and I took uh, and I I purchased the service from a person who had every right to do so, and offer it to me for a price. And uh, sometimes you can you don't even have to call it a pro a business. You just say it wasn't a business transaction. There was no financial matter involved. It was just you know I fucked her. I enjoyed it. It was fun. I was relieved. For a time, and uh, I figured, you know, I'll just give her twenty bucks, forty bucks, whatever, or to, in gratitude for having taken the time and uh, made the effort to, you know, get me off. Big deal. Prostitution is not a real crime, by the way. I said that. And I'm saying it again, it's not a fucking real crime. It's not. Fucking is not a crime. It's a natural biological function of human beings. Everybody wants to do it. Unless you're like a eunuch or just whatever. Not mentally ill or physically ill and so forth. So uh, uh, that's about it. You get it? You got the point, right? Okay. So being a hooker then or now is irrelevant to anything important. And I don't have to live with Melina, so it's not my problem if she was, is, or could be, or whatever. And if I thought, well, she's a hooker, and she's beautiful, and I'm going to marry her, and live with her, and have children with her, and love her, and have sex with her for free, <laughs> pretty much, uh, sort of, uh, then, hey, free country, damn it. All right. I'm done. And uh, we're going to fly off to other things here for a little bit, and I appreciate uh, your listening, and do me a favor. Pass this radio show along to your friends. Share it with people. Share it everywhere. You, just with everybody you know. And even people you don't know. Just share it. Because we'd like some more people to get the message. We'd like more people to be listening to me, because I'm a narcissist, <laughs> or an egotistical bastard, or whatever. And I'd like people to hear the message, because it's important. It is important. Not overly important, just, you know, marginally important. M certainly more important than some journalist calling Milena Hooker. <sighs> All right, gotta go. Catch you later. <laughs>